Today we're talking about the top 10 just weird things your tarantula does that you probably shouldn't be worrying about. So let's jump right in. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and just to set this scene for you, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten this message. It's late at night, you're almost asleep, maybe you're hanging out in your bedroom, or you're sitting on the couch watching TV, and you just hear this light thud, this tapping over and over again. And you get curious, so you go to investigate, and you're in the room where you keep your tarantulas, and you realize it's coming from one of your tarantula's enclosures. A lot of people worry, they panic, they think their tarantula is uncomfortable in its enclosure, or something else is wrong. So the number 10 weird thing that your tarantula does that you shouldn't worry about is playing the drums or tapping on the glass. Your spider is not trying to get your attention. It's it's not trying to escape. Well, not really. When a tarantula is tapping, that usually means that it's a male tarantula in search of a female. It's part of their mating practice is to go around tapping. And when they're in an enclosure, a lot of times they're tapping on the glass or they're tapping on the cork bark that's hitting the glass and it's making a noise that you can definitely hear. But it's nothing to be worried about. It's just a male tarantula looking for a female so you can relax. For number nine, we're talking about another weird behavior that tarantulas exhibit, and that is climbing the glass or walking across the top of an enclosure, essentially hanging upside down. For arboreal tarantulas or tree-dwelling tarantulas, this is typical behavior, it's nothing to be concerned about. But when you're talking about fissorial or terrestrial tarantulas that spend their entire life on or under the ground, seeing a species like that climbing the glass or trying to walk upside down across the top of the enclosure is worrisome. It can be dangerous, but it's not unique to your spider. This is very typical behavior, especially the first few days or weeks or even a few months after a rehouse. Whether you just got this tarantula or you just moved it into a new home, it can be very stressful for them and they don't really have their bearings yet. So they go walking and exploring. And as glass walls aren't typically found in nature, they instinctually don't know how to react to it. And a lot of times that means they start climbing the glass or moving across the top of the enclosure. This is why it's so important to make sure you fill your enclosure up at least halfway, if not more, with substrate. That way, if the tarantula is hanging from the top of its enclosure and falls, it won't have very far to fall. If you give them too much distance between the top and the substrate, a fall could hurt them or even be fatal. So if your tarantula is climbing the walls of its enclosure, it's not something to worry about. Just make sure you've got plenty of substrate in there and nothing really sharp or hard that if they fell on would cause them some serious damage. Now number eight is kind of in regards to a video I put out a little while ago about my jumping spiders. There are a lot of people leaving comments and expressing concern because one of my jumping spiders was missing a pedipal. It is unfortunate when something like that happens, but it is also fairly common, not something to really worry about. There's a lot of different reasons a tarantula could lose a leg or a pedipal, whether it's a bad molt, it was damaged, it got caught somewhere, but spiders, specifically tarantulas, possess the unique ability to remove their own limbs if they're damaged. And the cool thing is they will grow them back in the next mold or two. So something that looks like a horrific loss of limb is actually only temporary. So if your tarantula loses a limb or a pet about, it's not the end of the world. I would just check to make sure that it's not oozing hemoglyph, but as long as that's clotted up, it'll more than likely be regenerated in its next mold. Now this one is a classic. Number seven is going to be a bald spot on the abdomen of your tarantula. Now, if you've been keeping tarantulas for a while, you know this is nothing to worry about, but if you're new, it can be very concerning. You're not sure if your tarantula was hurt or damaged somehow, if it has some kind of mange or weird disease or fungus. Actually, all that means is that they kicked off all the urticating hair. This is typically just seen in new world species, but if the tarantula is defensive or is stressed out, a lot of times they will kick those urticating hairs. Not necessarily at you, they may just be kicking them around their enclosure and in their burrow as a line of defense. And it can look kind of creepy and, and ugly, but it's just a natural part of their existence. So it's not something to worry about. And the great thing is, next time it molts, all those hairs will have regrown on the new exoskeleton. And that process will just keep repeating for the life of the tarantula. <laughs> 
Now, number six is kind of gross, so I understand why people are concerned. I see a lot of posts in my Facebook group. I get messages and emails all the time from people that are worried because they saw their tarantula hang on the side of the glass enclosure and they could see this gross goo around their fangs. Immediately, the mind jumps to nematodes or some kind of horrible disease. And that can be possible in some rare circumstances. But by a wide majority, anytime someone sends me one of these pictures and is extremely stressed out about the situation, it turns out out that it's just half digested food. Tarantulas don't eat like we do. They don't chew it up and swallow their food. When they capture prey in their fangs, they secrete enzymes and a venom that breaks down that prey. And then they drink the gooey liquid. And they're messy eaters. So sometimes for a few hours to a few days after they eat, they'll essentially have mealworm or cricket or roach guts all around their mouth parts. And what's even more disgusting is sometimes after eating, a tarantula will regurgitate some of its prey and then re-ingest it. So it's it's always good to be observant and notice things like goo around the mouth parts and the fangs of your tarantula. But don't freak out. The majority of the time, it's just liquefied prey. Now, number five seems like something that everybody should know, but that's probably just because I've been doing this for so long. I get a lot of messages, see a lot of people express concern because their tarantula sealed up its burrow. They're worried that it's dying or something has gone wrong. The reality is tarantulas are pretty reclusive, some species more than others. And if they're in pre-molt or they just want to relax and get away from the lights and noises, a lot of times they'll hide in their burrow. And this will happen from spiderlings to adults. And occasionally when they retreat in their burrow, they will seal the burrow behind them with their webbing, or better yet, they'll excavate a lot of substrate and build a wall in front of their burrow. It's not something to worry about. It is kind of strange behavior, but essentially your tarantula is saying it does not want to be disturbed. Leave it alone. Sometimes that means it's preparing to molt. Other times it means it just wants to relax. It could be a seasonal thing. It could just be there's a lot of light and noise in the room. I mean, I'm not a tarantula. I don't understand why they do what they do, but I do know that they do this a lot and it's nothing to worry about. And and that kind of ties into the fourth weird thing that tarantulas do commonly, and that is renovating their entire enclosure. It can be a little frustrating at times. You spend hours building this enclosure and decorating it, getting it all set up perfectly, only to have your tarantula a day or two after you introduce it to its new home, tear down all the plants and fill up the water dish and just move substrate all over the place. Some species are more guilty of this than others. For instance, my grandma stole a poker piece, loves rearranging its enclosure. It's like a little excavator. But this doesn't necessarily mean that you're a bad keeper or that you set their enclosure up incorrectly. It just means they want to move stuff around to make it more comfortable for them. Or maybe they're just bored. I don't know. At any rate, it's not a new behavior, it's not a unique behavior, and it's not something you should be concerned about. Now, number three, I, I totally get. This even worries me sometimes. And that is tarantulas going on hunger strike. Whether it's a tiny spiderling or a full-grown adult, most species at one time or another will go on an extended hunger strike, meaning they won't take prey for weeks or even months. I've had a few tarantulas, like my rosehair tarantula, an Afana pelma calcodes, that didn't just go months without eating. They went over a year. And it's stressful. You're afraid your tarantula is going to die. Again, we're thinking about things through the eyes of a human. If we go too many days without eating, our body will just shut down. But it's not the same with tarantulas. They're opportunistic feeders. They're not out hunting and stalking their prey as much as they're laying in wait for the prey to walk by them. And in nature, that isn't something that happens every day or even every week. So they're accustomed to, or they've evolved to the point that they don't need to eat every day or every week. And there's nothing wrong with a tarantula refusing meals for weeks or even months at a time. Anytime that happens, I just just remove the uneaten prey, try again a week or two later. The larger the tarantula, it seems the more often they'll exhibit this behavior. But there are some spiderlings that will do that as well, especially species in the Afana pelma genus. So if your tarantula is not eating, don't worry. Just try again in a week or two. You can even change up the type of food that you're trying to feed it. But if it's still refusing food, you just got to be patient.
All right, number two has been responsible for some very panicked emails I've received very recently, actually. We all know that when tarantulas are hurt or dehydrated or just reaching the end of their life, they go into what's called a death curl, where all eight legs kind of fold up, curl up underneath their body. So as keepers, we're usually very perceptive, very keen at noticing any behavior that even slightly resembles a death curl. And if you see something like that, it can cause a lot of panic. But the number two weird thing that tarantulas do that you shouldn't worry about is preening, essentially cleaning themselves or hunkering down. If a tarantula is stressed, a lot of times it will pull all of its legs in, kind of hide its body with it, the knees, I guess it would be the best way to say that. And a lot of times after a meal or just because they want to, tarantulas will preen themselves. And what this looks like is maybe two or three of their legs are pulled or curled underneath their body. And they're using their legs to kind of clean out their fangs and their fangs to kind of clean their legs. But if you have never seen a death curl or never seen a tarantula preen itself, seeing two or three legs curling underneath the body of the tarantula can cause you to kind of freak out. You think it's just starting a death curl. Or if your tarantula is really stressed out and kind of hunkered down trying to hide itself, you may also think that that's that's the beginning of a death curl. But when they hunker down, that's essentially a sign of stress. It's too bright, it's too loud, it's a new environment. They're freaked out and they're just trying to hide and be really still and camouflage into the background. And if they're preening themselves, they, they, they're just giving themselves a bath. So relax, it's nothing to worry about. It's only a death curl if all eight legs are curled up tight underneath the body. And the number one weird thing that tarantulas do that you definitely should not worry about is flipping on their back. I know most of you all out there are well aware that tarantulas molt, but I can't tell you how many posts I've seen in the Facebook group, how many comments I've gotten on Instagram or emails and messages of people freaked out because their tarantula flipped over on their back. And you hear horror stories of people that were unsure what was going on and pick them up and put them right side up. Whether they're employees of pet stores or hobbyists that are just new to keeping tarantulas. First thing that comes to mind when you see a tarantula on its back, at least what comes to my mind, is a dead cockroach. When a roach dies, they always seem to be laying on their back. And it's unfortunate that most of the time when a tarantula molts, they look very similar. But it's not something to worry about. It's completely natural. In fact, it can be disastrous if you try to interfere with the tarantula while it's doing this. They're very vulnerable during the molting process. So if you touch them or even move the enclosure a lot, it can cause them stress, which could lead them to jump jumping back up right side and putting off molting for a few days, or if they've already begun the process, it could even cause some damage to them because their new exoskeleton is so soft and vulnerable. So if you see your tarantula laying on its back, leave it alone. Don't touch it, don't flip it over, don't even touch the enclosure. Just don't stress them out, that's the key. Well, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see all my past top 10 lists, just click this playlist right here. And if you wanna catch up on my latest video, just click right here. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>